So I was browsing Twitter today when I came across some very interesting tweets by Sletvana Lokova, who published her email correspondence with an NBC producer that had reached out to her to tell her her quote story. And she published both the reach out email and her subsequent correspondence with this NBC producer. And I thought it'd be interesting to kind of reveal for you guys here what it's like behind the scenes to be reached out to by a big media company and kind of what it looks like and certain telltale signs of what they're trying to do psychologically. So for context, I'm gonna pull it up on Twitter. So here's the first email Lakova received from an NBC producer named Anna. Hi, I'm a producer with NBC News. My friend did his PhD at Cambridge and his description of Halper matches yours. Would love to speak to you as soon as possible. I think it's really important. Best, Anna. I've left off the last names here. So that was the initial outreach email sent by an NBC producer to try and get a story. Now I want to draw your attention to, I would love to speak to you as soon as possible. I think it's really important. Both of these sound urgent, right? Like I'd love to see, speak to you as soon as, as soon as possible. I think it's really important. One, everybody writes this, everybody says it, it doesn't really mean anything. What it means is that the producer or who's ever reaching out to you is usually operating on a deadline. They're scrambling after multiple different stories. They're kind of fishing is what it's like, right? They're fishing for stories. They're casting in the reel. And as they throw in the reel and they're trying to make it look sparkly you know, and then squiggly for you to take the bait. So anytime you get reached out to by a producer or a journalist that says like, I think this is really important or we need to talk as soon as possible or some sort of you know urgency or, or timeline, ignore it. It's, it's no different than a salesman trying to close a deal, right? It's just, it's just a tactic to get you to respond. But let's continue. Lakova responded to that initial email and she said, okay, you know, uh, that sounds interesting. And they continue to have correspondence. I wanna read another email sent by Anna, the producer at NBC. And here it's a long one, but I think it's worth going into. After them talking about what you know, what this pr production piece might involve on NBC News, here are my thoughts. This is Anna writing back to Lakova. Here are my thoughts, and I will revise it tomorrow. I am passionate about writing this wrong and telling your story, which exposes Helper's true character and calls out the FBI for relying on slander, who cares much more about telling a juicy yarn than a truth. This is a breach of justice. Full stop. As a woman and a professional woman. I shudder at the notion of a fallacious story about sleeping with Flynn and spying no less not just told around Cambridge but given to the press and reported as fact. Now the first part of this is interesting because she's kind of appealing, this producer is appealing to the Lakova pathos, right? She's appealing to that kind of that interpersonal emotional reach, right? You know, as a woman and in fact as a professional woman like you, Lakova, who happens to be an academic and a professor, I feel this is really important, you know, but let's continue. So once again, look for these kind of psychological tricks because we're about to get interesting and it continues i propose that you hold off on doing any further media except for one on-camera interview with nbc news's top talent which i will produce you can tell your full story in the interview get the word out in a long-form television piece where people can see and hear you not just read about you and then be done with all the media and let the interview stand on its own and set the record straight one tv interview set the record straight move on with the book and hopefully dive into the next one so this is really interesting, right? First, the producer, Anna, appeals to their subject's pathos, like, hey, I understand you, I get you. And now she asks for something interesting. I don't wanna just produce this piece, and I think it's really important. I want us, NBC News, to be the only person that produces this piece. I want you to give us an exclusive interview, exclusive rights to your content, your story. And I can, I can promise you, we'll give you NBC's top talent, and I'm a true producer, and this will be you know, the best way for people to hear your voice. Very interesting, right? Why is she suddenly wanting only NBC to have the exclusive? If, if an individual really believes in the merit of the story, wouldn't you think like, hey, if you were your friend, telling your friend like, no man, you should talk to everybody as, you know, as possible to try to get this true story out, why would you just grant an, ex grant an exclusive interview? If you were somebody's true friend, you wouldn't be like, no, only talk to so-and-so. <laughs> Not, no, you should talk to you know Fox News, CNN, NBC, like get the word out as much as possible. That seems counterintuitive, but it's not for the producer because the producer can go back to her newsroom and say, hey, once again, remember when I said they were fishing, right? And she's got it, she's got a bite now. She can go around and say like, not did, only did she get a big, you know, a fish, she got a very big fish in the sense that, look, I, not, I might not just have an interview, I might have an exclusive interview where our subject, Lakova, has promised to not talk to anybody but us, right? We're gonna get the exclusive interview. And I'm selling this idea of exclusive interview with NBC to the subject by saying like, NBC is the right platform. We're big, do one interview, it'll set the record straight, except for we all know deep down that's not true, right? 
Like this Jim Jeffries thing proves that one interview does not set the record straight whatsoever. There is an entire production crew and you sit down in the interview and all the lights and the cameras and you sit there and NBC's top talent sits down next to you and asks you a bunch of questions, right? That you don't get to decide whatsoever. You're not controlling the narrative. NBC is controlling the narrative. And on top of that, they then control the edit and they control when it airs and the context before and after the interview. So just as a little pro tip, if you find yourself the subject of a story and a producer reaches out to you and says, you know, like, I think you should tell your story, but you should only tell it to us and, you know, not give any other interviews, ignore that as well. That is just trying to trick you into their own benefit. <laughs> if you want to control the narrative and as the subject of your own story, write a post on Medium or make a YouTube video because then you are the sole controller of that content. Do not seed that out willy nilly to another media company. Let's continue. Your interview will not be political because clearly you are not political. The producer is promising something that she can't really guarantee because once again, as I said, when you give that interview, right, and the, the NBC person sits down with you and there's just cameras and all those things, you don't, have, you don't control the questions you're about to get asked and you don't control the context that they're gonna give before and after the interview like they do with any interview. You want an example, just type in Vladimir Putin interview CBS, right? And a classic like Charlie Rose and they cut clips of Charlie Rose interviewing Vladimir Putin and then they cut back and forth to the newsroom where they then discuss and contextualize the interview. But that contextualizing frames the entire viewing and parameters of what the, the viewer expects of that interview itself. So saying your interview will not be political because clearly you're not political doesn't mean anything. We will set the, and it continues, we will set the record straight and expose a wrong. It'll be all the more powerful if NBC does it. One, because it's the most watched network, right? Most watched network, put it on YouTube. You can get millions of views on YouTube. In fact, a lot of videos, go talk to Shane Dawson. He'll get you more views than NBC. Nonetheless, we'll continue. And two, if NBC is doing it, given the network's aggressive reporting on this administration, people will take it all the more seriously. So then once again, responding to that, responding to that kind of a, uh, the, the logos, now the rational, like not only is it going to be the most watched, but it's the most authoritative. NBC is the most authoritative. But this is once again all subjective, right? Is there such thing as such an authoritative news source? Mm, most political sciences, no, right? We all exist in our kind of echo chambers. Finally, Anna continues, I and my team in the investigation unit will take this story and its important implications very seriously, and I believe blah, 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 blah. NBC is a place for serious journalism. I consider my serious, serious journalist. I sincerely hope you'll consider working on me with this. Now, after these emails, Lakova took debate and she went down the rabbit hole and she said, yeah, you know, I'll stop giving, I'll stop talking to any of the press, which she stopped doing. And she started continually talking to this producer at NBC. And Lakova recounts that every time she would hop on the phone, instead of the questions getting, you know, trying to expand the context, they got more and more interrogative. And she started to go like, what's going on here? And then she noticed something even more interesting. The COVID noticed that other people started following her Twitter account that were associated with NBC. There was a producer on Rachel Maddow, there was a White House correspondent that was suddenly following her Twitter account, and she couldn't understand why. Why were these NBC people now all following her Twitter account? And so she finally brought this up with a phone call she was having with Anna, the producer at the time, saying, hey, do you know these people? And Anna responded, why do you ask? And this gave another clue. So then Lakova said, are these people on the call with you right now? Are they feeding you questions? And NBC immediately hung up on her. Very interesting, right? So then, quote unquote, Lakova says, <laughs> the NBC producer called her back later from the NBC producer's cell phone and said, hey, you know, I still really want to tell your story, but, um, you know, I'm getting pushed back, blah, 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 blah. Forget that. Once again, all that's happened is that NBC was out there fishing for stories. They were seeing what fish they caught. They, they got a bait. They said, oh, wait, don't, don't interview with anybody else. You know, while we wait and decide if we want to run a story. And in the meantime, while well, you're screwing over this person by saying, hey, don't go around talking to other media, other press, only give us the exclusive interview. They also got other fish on the line. And if another fish seems better or bigger, it might be a more juicy story at the end of the day, right? They're going to go with that. And then they're going to kind of throw off the other fish, throw it back in the water and be like, oh, yep, that's the way it is. But that subject, that person has now just wasted, you know, a week, two weeks, six weeks, six months of their life thinking, being led down this rabbit hole of news and journalism, thinking their story is going to be finally told by the most watched and most, most authoritative news uh, platform there is. When in reality, probably it was never going to happen to begin with. Anyway, I thought that was some interesting insights. If you guys want to leave a comment down below or watch another video, you can click around. As always, thanks for watching. If you want to subscribe, that'd be great. Thanks, guys. Bye.